Hello everyone. Uh, now in this video, I am going to explain uh, one of the major application of spread spectrum. That is CDMA system based on IS95. Here, the IS stands for Interim Standard 95. So this particular standard was used for mobile communication uh, for a CDMA mobiles, which uses uh, spread spectrum technique. This was one of the earlier or the first generation standard defined, defined by TIA, that is Telecommunication Industry Association, and used worldwide as one of the standard for uh, CDMA mobiles. So in this video, I'm going to explain uh, very briefly about this application, how the spread spectrum technique is actually used in the IS-95, not in detail because this is completely beyond the scope of uh, this subject, digital communication. Uh, because uh, I have to understand only the application, that's all. So because you are going to study that in detail in the, maybe in the upper uh, or higher semesters later uh, in the mobile communication or maybe wireless communication subject, you are studying that in detail. So very briefly, I am going to explain uh, about this uh, standard, how it is used in the mobile communication, CDMA mobiles. So CDMA is one of the multiple access techniques used in the uh, mobile communication. Oh application fine now as i told uh, direct sequence method is actually used here direct sequence per spectrum uh, is actually used uh, and the cdma has one of the multiple access technique for uh, voice communication uh, in the north america so this is 95 is defined uh, earlier and used by the north america uh, this is the first generation uh, system and is uh, designed and developed by qualcomm communication america qualcomm is one of the biggest company a largest contributor you can say for a mobile uh, communication fine and uh, this is one of the standard as i told earlier as uh, specified as is 95 interim standard 95 uh, in 1995 by ti and uh, in this particular standard the mobile works in the frequency band of around 800 megahertz band or uh, 1900 megahertz band in this particular band these uh, cdma mobiles work I'll give you exactly frequency ranges in the last slide in this video later. Now, the advantage of this uh, IS-95 or a CDMA over say TDMA or uh, FDMA, frequency division multiple axis, time division multiple axis, is that we say some, we use technically one word here, frequency reuse factor. The frequency reuse factor M is equal to one. That means more number of uh, Simultaneous users can be accommodated. You hear simultaneous users means in mobile communication, the persons who want to communicate with each other, the sender receivers and all. Most more number of uh, simultaneous users can be accommodated compared to TDMA or FDMA. So frequency reuse factor is equal to one, n equal to one. What is that uh, frequency reuse factor is? I'll tell you with uh, this particular diagram just look at this this is actually in the tdma fdma based the left side this one this one is uh, uh, frequency reuse factor of uh, seven which is used in the amps standard analog uh, mobile you know communication standard actually which, which was one of the the first standard defined and used earlier 1970s and 80s uh, okay fine so what is the frequency reuse factor here just to understand that frequency reuse factor term i have used to this otherwise it is not required Anyway, so frequency reuse factor. So what we exactly we are doing is in the cell communication, we say cell communication or mobile communication, the entire area, okay, the entire coverage area of uh, one particular station or a mobile st uh, station, uh, uh, you know, is divided into a number of smaller areas. The smaller areas are actually called as cells. This is one complete area. Let us say this is Udupi. This may be at Bangalore. This may be Mumbai. This area so whole area is divided into smaller areas we call them as cells okay in each cell we will be having something called as base stations i will not go in detail about these things let's just look at this some alphabetically they are represented the middle one is a seven this is a seven cell group we call them as cluster a b c d e f g again repetition a b c d e f g again repetition a b c d e f g so this is one cluster this is another cluster this is one more cluster i have shown only three clusters the area is huge big 
these are all smaller areas maybe a small area small city maybe or even small place 50 uh, sorry uh, maybe one kilometer range of distance that's it whatever okay now so what is the meaning of this frequency reuse is in the uh, mobile communication the whatever the frequency channels are allocated say for uplink or a downlink that is mobile station to the base station communication or maybe base station to the mobile station communication the frequencies allocated uh, can be reused the same frequencies can be reused everywhere see in this particular the frequencies used in this particular cluster can be used in this cluster also that means let us say reuse factor is 7 i say and around 70 channels are allocated for a particular company my company is using 70 channels let us say airtel airtel is using 70 only channels channels here means the frequency carriers number of carriers what is allocated for that now out of 70 uh, channels allocated what they do is they divide those channels into uh, and allocate that into seven cells here that means 10 each i can say 10 into 7 is 70 the same 70 channels can be reused in this particular cluster or in this particular cluster that means the 10 channels allocated for this 10 here 10 here 10 here 10 here again 10 again 10 total 70 so 10 channels used here are reused in the again same cell that is a again same cell that is frequency reuse so it will i mean without avoiding that interference at all no, if i use the same frequency say f1 f1 and f1 interference may happen that is called some you know co-channel interference and all those things but anyway leave it, leave it so but by avoiding that interference and all we can still reuse the frequencies here 7 reuse factor is 7 that means uh, in seven cells we use it but the advantage of say the frequency given to this channel cannot be used for this particular cell not for this particular cell the frequency allocated for this cell is not used by this particular cell it is different frequency allocated for this cell is used by this cell in the another cluster but in a cdma since here you know, we are spreading over a large bandwidth entire bandwidth actually you can say frequency reuse factor is one that means we can use the same frequencies in all the cells irrespective of the cluster or within the cluster that is the meaning of frequency reuse factor fine okay now i'll go to the next uh, part uh, coming back to this uh, cdma okay the usually uh, in the uplink or a downlink say it's a forward link is also called forward link and reverse link the downlink is called forward link and uh, uh, the uplink is called reverse link here the downlink means from the base station communication happening from the base station to my mobile station so i have a mobile here i have a mobile my base station is sending a signal to this base station is a cell site cell stations whatever the antenna you see now in the top in a build build you know top of the buildings is a base station controlling station so that they are sending the signal they are sending the signal to the mobile stations number of mobile stations in that particular area okay so that is called actually the downlink or a forward link base station to the mobile station communication uh, that happens uh, with a they use a bandwidth of around 1.25 megahertz that means whatever the spreading they do they do uh, they spread over the entire bandwidth of 1.25 megahertz and in the reverse link that is uplink from the base station uh, sorry mobile station to the base station uh, the again there is again a particular you know carriers uh, carriers allocated with a bandwidth of around 1.25 megahertz so that means signals are spread over as you can see over here signals are spreaded over the entire bandwidth of typically speaking specifically telling you 1.2288 mega chips per second which is almost equal to 1.25 megahertz in terms of frequency in terms of mega chips per second mega chips means spreading uh, signal will have a chips we call them as chips every bit of that uh, spreading code pn code is called as chip so we are going to spread over that particular large bandwidth 1.2288 mega chips per second now just coming to this uh, block diagram that is i'll explain one by one now the forward link and the uh, reverse link that is downlink and the uplink communication and this is just a modulator part just look at this diagram this block diagram represents actually only the modulator section of the uh, forward link that is base station communication happening from the base station to the mobile station in the base station because you know, when you communicate what exactly happens is when i send a signal say i want to two people are communicating with each other this is myself this is another person so i send the signal to 
I use a mobile my mobile mobile phone and I send a signal to this particular person. But signal will not go directly to that person. Signal goes to the base station. From base station, it goes to some other uh, stations like you know MSC and all these. Usually in the mobile communication, leave it that now right now. So from base station, it goes to MSC. From that, it goes to base station of this particular person wherever he is uh, located. And from that base station, it will go to this. From base station to this person, the communication is called as forward link. Fine. From a base station to this is a forward link. So this is a modulator which modulates and sends the signals to the uh, mobile communication. So mobile station, I'm sorry. Now what exactly happens here? How this spreading is done? What kind of codes are used? I'll explain it in this diagram. In the IS-95 CDMA mobiles. Now, the data or the voice here, data means here voice. The voice can be generated at the variable rates, different rates. Okay, uh, maybe 9.6 kbps, 4.8, 2.4 or 1.2 kbps. And these data are a voice signals, the digital communication, right? It's a digital communication. So voice signal is converted into digital form. It is converted into this variable bitrate by using a particular coder called as CELP. The CELP coder. The CELP coder, we call this as CELP coder. Okay, that is CE. Oh, very sorry, not possible to write properly here. Yeah, I'm not expert in this. It's ELP coder. That is uh, code excited linear predictor coder. Code excited linear prediction coder. So this type of coder is actually used to generate variable uh, variable data rate information. That is voice. Okay. Uh, this is the high data rate signal, 9.6, lower data rate. Uh, that means what happens is usually is uh, data rates are variable that's because i stop talking now right when you are communicating with two people either you are talking or that person is talking when you are not talking the speech activity is less when you are talking continuously you are talking speech activity is more more data are generated correct right when i convert that into digital form so based on that based on that the variable the data rate will change these are all very low speech rate activities talking less particular time right that time the data rate is less but what happens actually here is in this you know modulator or this particular you know uh, clp code and all we convert that into the sim uh, 9.6 kbps only even if it is 4.8 okay same bits are repeated twice here four times here eight times to get us constant or single data rate of 9.6 kbps before you apply to this network that is done by CELP. Fine. And even uh, when our speech activity is very less, even the power level of that signals are also made constant. It is increased to a certain level, 9 dB, I think. I will show you that in the next slide. Okay, fine. So 9 points kbps is the standard rate. That I will give to the convolutional encoder. Okay, why the use of what is the use of convolutional encoder? Of course, it is used for uh, error detection and correction purpose. Detect the you know, uh, convolution code is one of the uh, you know important coding technique, right? Block coding and convolutional coding. So convolution coding technique is used, which is a half rate coder with L equal to nine. Here L equal to nine means it is a constraint length of that convolutional encoder. One bit will affect nine number of bits. So we just go through that uh, con you know meaning of uh, constraint length at all. So this is one half rate L equal to nine uh, you know convolutional uh, coder. Okay. The output of uh, this is given to the block interleaver. Block interleaver is another uh, channel coding technique and it is used especially for uh, say AWGN type of uh, channel or maybe a fading channel because what happens is in the you know, free space or a wireless uh, communication there is something called as a burst error. Burst error means it is a impulse type of noise which act suddenly on a group of data, group of bits, burst block of data, block of data will be get corrupted. To avoid that, some block interleaving technique is used. They will rearrange these uh, data bits into the, you know, some random order and they rearrange and they uh, group it again, they send it. So impact will be less. Again, I'm not going in detail about that. The output of this will be around 19.2 kbps data. Okay, the output of the block interleaver. 9.6 is converted into 19.2 kbps. Now, this is the second part. Now here we are going to generate a PN sequence. The pseudo random sequence. We use some mask here. Mask is nothing but again, some uh, codes are generated based on the electronic serial number of uh, the mobile and uh, something called as an A code, A, uh, uh, you know, what is that? Uh, uh, there are different, you know, encryption methods used, and by using that, they generate some mask. Okay. So, by using that, 
again masks different masks for different uh, mobiles uh, coming mobiles this is given to the long uh, code generator long code generator is a pn sequence generator it's called long code because it generates a very length uh, no uh, big length pn sequence large length uh, pn sequence and it uses actually to a 42 uh, shift registers it's a 42 bit uh, lfsr you can say linear feedback shift register so the length will be equal to power 42 minus 1 right and that is given to the, uh, that is given to some decimator decimator is function of that decimator is to uh, convert this uh, you know 1.2288 mega chips per second into 19.2 kilo chips per second so it is divided by 64 here in decimator it is decimated by 64 and the bit rate now matches both are multiplied it's randomized here scrambled you can say then given to another multiplier where you know the bit rate is around 1.2288 mega chips per second it is given by another uh, pn sequence generator over here this is a pn sequence one more uh, generator it generates some bits at the rate of around 1.2288 mega chips per second it is called Hadamard sequence or a Walsh sequence it is a unique uh, sequence a 64 bit sequence and basically we will be having 64 bit 64 unique uh, Hadamard sequences there are 64 different sequences each with a 64 bit fine are generated with this particular rate so this is used to multiply with uh, this data here this is the multiple product of these two here we get 90.2 kbps and uh, it is again expanded the data is expanded to 1.2288 megabits per second that bit is expanded okay this uh, now this is given again back to the now this is given to the two channels over here one is i channel the other one is called q channel for a modulation purpose fine in, the, in this case again again so just look at this again i am showing one the pn code generator for i channel and pn code generator for q channel this pn code is again a unique orthogonal pn codes okay and uh, it's a short sequence this is long code this is a short code uh, pn sequence generator because uh, the length is 2 power 15 here here 2 power 42 minus 1 here it is 2 power 15 so it is called short code again one more spreading is done by using this okay in the p channel i channel baseband shaping filter again it's a low pass filter which is uh, to provide a particular shape to the signal it is used then this is the modulator part this part is a modulator part i have a carrier generator 90 degree phase shifter given to this so i channel and q channel you can say right and uh, here we are going to add uh, the other signals to this uh, Y signal. This is the Y signal here. Pilot signals, some synchronization signals, some uh, no, uh, paging signals, some other signals are also added to this here. Okay. Uh, again, I am not going into detail about those uh, channels at all. Uh, again, multiplied with uh, this carrier, we have a, a satisfactory carrier over here with a 90 degree phase shift and this is given directly over here. So, this is a Q channel, I channel, I can say. And the output is combined, so output will be so we get a four different phases because of I channel and Q channel. So we can we can call this as a QPSK modulation. This is a QPSK modulation, what is used actually over here. Fine. So this is what happens in the forward link. I'll explain about all these things. Just go to the points. Code excited linear predictor filter. I said, right? Okay, now before again, one more thing is now the data, whatever I'll get over here, the data we divide it into around you no know, frame time, you know, uh, frame of 20 milliseconds. Whatever the data I get is divided into 20 frame, 20 millisecond frames. This is the entire frame. I have an entire data divided into 20 milliseconds frame. Uh, that is done. Then, okay, so half rate uh, coder, constant length L equal to 9, right? Again, I said uh, expanded for a low speech activity. Power is reduced by, uh, you know, the 3 or 6 or 9 dB, depending on, uh, you know, the data rates here. For, for When it, speech activity is less, you reduce the power and save the battery, uh, you know, of the... Uh, you know, transmission, power transmission. Uh, each channel user is assigned a Hadamard or a Walsh code sequence of length equal to 64. 64 different, I said, 64 different with a length of 64. It is called Hadamard uh, code because uh, this Walsh code is generated by using the Hadamard uh, trans uh, transformation. You might have studied that, right? There are 64 orthogonal channels. These channels are divided into pilot channel, which is used for, you know, uh, means measuring the channel characteristics including signal strength and carrier phase offsets and all what is the signal strength whether we have to adopt the signal strength change we have to change the signal strength all such signals are given by the pilot signal it acts like a reference signal actually time synchronization so we have to every time we have to synchronize uh, the you know the channels so this is done by using this particular channel uh, we use one more channel actually for uh, paging purpose Okay, so one for pilot channel, one for paging, one for uh, time synchronization out of 64. So we can say that remaining 61 channels are used for allocating to different users. They are called as traffic channels. So why signals are transmitted over 61 channels? Basically, 
around eight channels are used for these three purposes and remaining is only used for voice so it depends it depends 64 voice signal size 64 61 simultaneous users can be accommodated at that time fine in the and they can spread over 1.25 uh, megahertz bandwidth okay now that's about uh, the forward link down link this is up link that means now from the mobile station to the base station sending a signal from mobile station to the base station what exactly happens how, how the spreading is done same similar to the previous case again so i have a mobile generating a celp coder is used different uh, data rate is possible over here right the low speech activity convert again into the uh, you know 9.6 kbps standard with the same power that 3 6 and 9 db things at all right 1.2 eight times this is uh, four four times uh, the same bits are repeated to get a 9.6 4.8 into 2 9.6 two times it is repeated the same data is repeated to get a constant uh, data rate right rate equal to 1 by 2 is mentioned in the book or in the block diagram here please change make uh, note this uh, correction it is 1 by 3 l equal to 9 coder it's 1 by 3 coder okay not 1 by 2 so it's given to the block interval level again for that uh, you know different type of uh, you know the impulse noise okay uh, in this case compared to the uh, forward link uh, for a awgn type of uh, channel okay the the effect what we say the effect here uh, this coding gain what we say we get a coding gain because of the coding technique conversion coding technique the coding gain what we get because for a awgn channel is actually same as the previous one the forward link but it is much higher coding gain for the in the fading channel if the channel is a fading type of channel okay higher coding gain what we get by 1 by 3 coder is actually higher okay and one more difference is actually here the data rate sorry the data rate is 28.8 kbps there it was 19.2 kbps but here the data rate what we get is 28.8 kilo symbols per second because it's a 1 by 3 coder i'm using extra bits are generated by using this convolutional coding technique now so in a 20 millisecond if say 28.8 kilo symbols are there per second that is 28800 symbols per second that means in 20 because i said we are going to divide that in 20 millisecond frames in 20 millisecond you will be having around 576 bits encoded bits in the output of the block inter block interleaver okay that is 28.8 multiply by 20 divided by 1000 20 millisecond convert that into just find what is the number of bits we get for 20 millisecond you get 576 encoded bits that is given to the again orthogonal modulator 2064 array orthogonal hadamard code i can say here okay again uh, any one of the hadamard code can be used for a particular user out of 60, 64 users can we can have out of that one hadamard code is used for a one particular user at a particular instant of time when he is trying to communicate with other person then that code can be given to other person same pn code can be used by other person if you are not talking then ideal i can use that code same code for other person okay now here compared to this again before going to this particular block the explanation over here just come to this again mask for user i particular user given to the long code generator 1.2288 megabits per second code is generated by using a pn code sequence fine so this output this output are multiplied over here here the in the input we have a 28.8 kilo symbols per second within a 20 millisecond frame that means six six bits of this data is actually mapped into one of the 64 bit hadamard code so 64 bit hadamard code is multiplied with six bit six bit expanded something like that not one bit it's six bit multiplied with 64 bit hadamard code or a walsh code okay so the data rate what we get in the output of this is around 307.2 kilo symbols per second multiplied with uh, 1.2288 mega chips per second if i take a ratio of this to this again i get only 4 pn chips uh, per every bit of this so one bit is multiplied with four bits of this just multiply this I'm sorry divide this by this that's it okay now the output of that is given to the again i channel and q channel pn sequence generator unique uh, pn code is generated here for uh, two channels for a particular user Data rate same 1.2288. Here the data rate is 1.2288 because multiplied with 1.2288 here. Both are multiplied, expanded to a large bandwidth of 1.25 megahertz. In the I channel again, we have a carrier generator, rated phase shifter, baseband shaping filter. Okay, we provide a particular shape to the signal. Maybe are you converting into polar format? Maybe for a PSK. 
multiplied with this as a product modulator. Now the change here in the reverse lane in the Q channel, in this particular channel, we use one delay compared to this. So half chip delay compared to this uh, PN sequence, here this is delayed by half bit interval. Okay, so this synchronization information and all should be given by the uh, channels called as synchronization channel. Anyway, uh, again, I'll skip that. Baseband shipping filter multiplied. Okay, okay, yeah. Because of this delay and all, no, this method is actually called quadrature phase shift keying only. Even the forward link we used a quadrature phase shift keying. This is also called a quadrature phase shift keying only. But because of this offset, a delay or an offset, we call this as OQPSK. That is, Offset QPSK modulation technique is used here. It's a variation or a mo modification of the QPSK only. Okay, combined here, so we get a QPSK output. This is for a one CDMA signal, the output of the CDMA signal. That's what I'll get. Fine. This is, I think I might have explained a bit detail, but this, that, that much of detailed explanation is not quite fine because just as I said, we are going to study only the application. All this is, I think I explained already. I'll leave it. Fine. Now, this is just a summary what exactly you know, we do in both the uh, uh, downlink and uplink. Okay, now just look at this. This is the frequency range. I say 800 megahertz band. 800 megahertz band means this is the range of frequencies used. Okay, for uplink 824 to 849. GSM also it is same. 869 to 894, 25 megahertz of bandwidth. Separation of uh, uh, no, around the 20 uh, 20 megahertz of uh, no separation here between this and this 40 megahertz. Between this and this 40 megahertz again. Anyway, number of carriers is 20. We get 20 carriers. Each with a mega bandwidth of around 1.25 megahertz. This whole band is divided into 20. Uh, now, uh, FDM technique is used in 20 channels. I'll get each with a mega bandwidth of uh, 1.25 megahertz. CDMA multiple access method. Number of carriers 60. Roughly they are given 60, 64. Out of that, again, I said maybe 3, maybe around 8. Practically, it is 8. Used for some other purpose pilot channel, paging channel, and all. Remaining is used for voice communication, traffic channel, voice channels. Chip rate is this. Variable rate, CELP technique is used, code exacted the linear prediction. This is a speech rate, I mentioned, block interleaver is used. For channel encoding technique is, uh, for a downlink it is half rate, L equal to 9. For a uplink it is 1 by 3, uh, L equal to 9. BPSK with the QPSK spreading technique, right? 64 uh, array orthogonal with the QPSK spreading technique for a uh, uplink channel, that is uh, orthogonal QPSK or offset QPSK, we say. I did not mention about a receiver. Demodulation technique is done by using something called as rake receivers. This is one of the best receiver used for fading channels. Again, not, I'm not going in detail about that. Hadamar or a Walsh sequence is used, right? For a spreading purpose. PN sequence for a long code, it is 2 power 42 minus 1. For a spreading code, for a, long, a short uh, sequence, it is 2 power 15. Uh, spreading code is actually used. Okay, now, so in this video, what I have explained is a IS95. The first generation standard used for CDMA which uses DSSS, direct sequence spread spectrum. So thank you for watching this video.